Uh, was there any specific genre you wanted to get in when you wanted to become an actor? No, I just wanted to work. Okay, and when you originally, did you audition for the roles with the Jack Hill films? Uh, for his first film, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it, it, he was uh, a student at UCLA at the time, and this was his student film, and he couldn't find anybody that he was really happy with, and so his instructor, Dorothy Arzner, was friends with an instructor of mine from the Pasadena Playhouse. Mm -hmm. She called with the problem. My instructor, <coughs> excuse me, my instructor called me and said, get over to UCLA, there's maybe a job for you. And Jack Hill and I have been friends and associates for the last 50 years. Okay, even even still now, that's that's awesome. Yeah. And then when you did decide in '92 to leave the business, um, I've been having trouble phrasing this in my mind, but basically you have the the very strong idea of never quit, never give anything up. But then right. you took a stand with your career, saying that you didn't want to be one of the the heavy hitter kind of guys anymore, and you walked away from it. What did you? What was your thought process, and what did you take away in '92 when you made that decision? I actually freed myself. You know, um, when you go to work, you have to enjoy your work. You know, it has to be fun for you. The more fun your work is, the better you are at it. <coughs> Excuse me. And I just wasn't having any fun anymore. So I felt okay about walking away and taking a big step back and starting fresh at some other point in time. I didn't know when that was going to happen, but mm -hmm. at some other point in time. Well, what do you think of, of character actors? It's not exactly in order, but to, the idea, I'm not really a fan of horror movies. I loved both The House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects. I think that they're artfully done. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Rob Zombie and his work, but um, when you put yourself into that character's kind of mindset, uh, and even, you know, maybe Heath Ledger or Christian Bale with the, the Batman. What do you think that does to an actor? Or how do you kind of balance that? <laughs> does it affect I, you? It doesn't affect me. It's in really a way. just acting and that's, that's the fun. There's this, there's this little guy back there that keeps reminding me nobody gets hurt, okay? Um, and, uh, but I, I take everything seriously and I take it as far as I can possibly take it within the realm of believability mm -hmm. uh, without causing anybody any harm. Do you think that it does have an effect on some actors or even like child actors? Yeah, yeah, uh, it, it does. Okay, yeah. child actors, you know, it, the ones that have wound up in not too good a position as adults, okay, mm -hmm. were definitely affected by their surroundings working in this business, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, they had to grow up too fast, uh, and they were doing weird things, which were not weird to them at the time, it was playing, okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, it left some scars along the way. And then what did you, I'm assuming, I haven't actually seen this in print or in an interview before, but I'm assuming that Rob Zombie actually sought you out because of a respect for your work. Did you have any any idea or any opinion about him or his work? Because House of a Thousand Corpses was his first movie. Right. What did you uh, think of him or his music? I, I loved his music. I thought it was great. He had a very tight band, okay? Uh, and because I'm a musician myself, that's I respect that. You play okay. drums? Yeah. And uh, so, uh, you know, it was not a big shock to me that he was going to turn out to be a great director. Mm -hmm. well, usually, you know, when you get into the realm of art, if you are exceptional at one thing, you're probably going to be at least very good at something else, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and that's, you know, that's his situation. That's not always the case, though, is it? <laughs> No. <laughs> is there is there any horror film that you would want to see redone? They're always doing remakes. Is... I don't want to see any horror films redone. Okay. I don't want to see any film, films redone. But then what about when Zombie did Halloween? I mean, Halloween, I really like the backstory. It, it was a con and... 
Yeah, it was a continuation of uh, the story in a very realistic way, mm -hmm. okay? It's great to have the guy behind the mask. God bless everybody that plays those guys, mm -hmm. okay? And a lot of them are my friends, okay? And we hang together. Um, but how cool to delve into their past and find out what made them that way. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, and the, the hypnotherapist in me, enjoys that and wants to wants to be able to see that and explore that and say aha okay i see this trait i see that trait okay so are there any other characters in any other horror movies that you think somebody could do a good job kind of maybe digging it up and not necessarily redoing it but you know expanding the exposition yeah there's there's probably you know all kinds all right besides michael myers you know the, Freddy and, and you know Dick. yeah yeah all, all of them you know and then you did some production work yourself I saw something about a movie about um, putting people in an insane asylum to see if they go insane what movie was that that was that was one of the half a dozen films that people wanted me to direct but never were really good at raising money okay yeah, yeah. If, um, if I had directed everything that people wanted me to direct, I would now be a director as opposed to an actor. And you are still an actor. Can you tell me about your role in The Lords of Salem that's coming out later this year? Very little. This is CIA stuff, okay? okay? I mean, we literally only got the scenes that we were involved in. I never got a full script. Okay. Okay? It's top secret but stuff. But the shooting is done. It's in post-production, right? Most of the shooting is done. Yeah, okay. there's there's probably going to be some reshoots. Uh, just like, you know, in, in Halloween, mm -hmm. okay, the film was done. It was completed. It was being uh, screened um, uh, at Sneak Pebrews all, all around the country, okay? And when uh, they did a, a preview in uh, New York, it went over, it was amazing, the survey cards came back, just glowing reports and everything. And Rob went to the Weinsteins and said, you know, I there's some scenes that I want to shoot and I need more money. And they said, yeah, sure, kid, go ahead, mm -hmm. you know. So he called me on a Thursday and he said, what are you doing Saturday? I said, nothing. And he goes, well, you are now. Show up at this cemetery and we're, um, we're going to shoot a scene with you and Malcolm McDowell. Okay. I wasn't even in that film <laughs> until it was all put together and done. Wow. And, and there's nothing more you can tell us about the Lords of Salem, just that it's top secret stuff. Very they would, they would They would have to kill me. And, <laughs> and do, do you have, well, let me ask first, as a horror actor and somebody who's seen as, you know, a psycho on screen, do you have anything that really makes you uncomfortable? Either personally or something that you wouldn't do professionally? Government. <laughs> that, you know, that reminds me, I don't want to take a bunch of your time, but with the Do Not Quit, I saw that you had a platform for trying to get 1% of the vote in 2008. It's yeah. now an election year again. Are you doing that again? Uh, you know, I'm not doing that this time. I'm, I'm making people politically aware of what's going on, but that thing of running for president actually created a lot of work, mm -hmm. uh, particularly for my wife, who was my publicist, because people would write in and they say, well, we think he's crazy and, uh, you know, his view on this is all of that. And now she had to start answering all of these, you know, political questions and everything. I, I'm not into putting her through that. That's, that's just above and beyond the call of duty. Yeah. She, she didn't sign up when she did the I do's. Mm -hmm. She didn't sign up for that. That wasn't in the contract? <laughs> no, it was not, you know, <laughs> love, cherish, and do all of this nasty work. Uh, she, she's amazing. <clears throat> I wouldn't be where I am right now if it were not for the work that she does. Okay. Um, and uh, so, long story short, I'm not running, but I am going to keep on people to make themselves politically aware of what's going on, uh, all of the travesties that are happening, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, 
Do you publicly endorse any of the potentials or the... Not a one. Not <laughs> one. Not write somebody in. One. You write, write soupy sales in. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then do you have any regrets? And is there anything left? In, what in your career do you still want to do? And what do you possibly regret? I have all kinds of things that I need to do. Okay. Uh, there are all kinds of characters out there that I need to play. Uh, I need to be able to show compassion. I need to be able to show love. I need to be able to show intelligence. Uh, I need to show all of those things. And people are saying, you know, you're getting old. Uh, when are you going to retire? Never. Okay. Do you feel typecast now? Do you feel that you'd have trouble getting a role in, in a more, you know, intellectual I, or whatever? I was. Uh, typecast, uh, you know, after House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects, but now things are starting to loosen up and people are starting to say, hey, you know what, this guy can do a lot of different stuff. Uh, in Mimesis, I play uh, <laughs> a guy who is an actor, a horror film celebrity, um, a director. And it starts off at a convention like this with me doing a Q&A and then everything kind of turns bad. Mm -hmm. uh, in Infliction, uh, I play a psychiatrist, okay? Um, in Zombex, I play the commander of a special forces unit, okay? So things are starting to spread out, which is exactly, you know, what my plan was from the beginning. Mm -hmm. It just took 50 years to put it in place. So what advice would you give to yourself, like a younger you, knowing what you know now? Don't get typecast. Because <laughs> <laughs> it wastes a lot of your time, it wastes a lot of your talent. You don't get to use all of your tools, okay? Yeah. There's not really a way to avoid that sometimes, is there? No. It just depends on the popularity of any given film. Well, yeah. It's, and, you know, it, it just it speaks to the way things are done now. It's like somebody does a film that is successful and then everybody says, well, let's do a film like that, mm -hmm. okay? And then you have all of these unsuccessful rip-off films. Yes, money okay? is the great determinant. Yeah, and uh, so, you know, it just it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Well, thank you so much for your time. I know that you need to get some breakfast and I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you.